This is my first YouTube tutorial and today we're going to talk about async tasks in Android. So when you have an application and you want to do some sort of long calculation or download something from the internet, you do not want to do that in the main thread because the main thread is the one responsible to re responding to user actions such as pressing a button and stuff like that. So if you do something that takes a long time in the main thread, the application will appear to be frozen to the user, and that's not what you want. So today we're going to sh uh, show how you can use async tasks to do that type of long calculation or network requests. So here we have a very simple Android application open, and I'm going, I'm going to assume you know how to do that by yourself, but I might do a tutorial on setting that up in the future. And here we have an emulator. We're going to start by making sure this works well by sending it to the emulator. And here it should pop up. There it is. It just says hello world. So now we go back to the code. And here what we're going to do is we're going to set up a button just so we can press it and show what happens. So here we go to the activity main.xml, which is the layout for the main activity, as it says here, activity main. So it looks for this file. And here we're just going to add a button. A button, and we're going to add a few mandatory fields here, which would be layout width. And for width, we're going to do match parent. And layout height. Here we're going to do wrap content. Android text. This is the text that we write inside the button. We're going to say, press here. And the most important of all, Android on click, which lets us specify the name of the method, button clicked. So you can write anything there, but we're going to call the method button clicked. And here we are. And go back to the main activity, and we're going to write that public void on click method. This has to accept a view and here we go. So when this button is clicked we're just going to show a very simple message to the user. You can do that with a toast make text. We have to give the this object which is the activity and the text we want to write. I'm just going to say button pressed. And duration, we're just going to use a predefined duration here. And once that's made, it'll return the object and on it we'll call the show method. So there we are. This you can import by pressing command shift O in Mac or control alt O in Ubuntu, for example. And we save. There are no errors. And now we're going to go straight to the application and see how it looks. Okay, so we should be careful um, to name this method the same as we had placed in the XML file. It has to be called actually button clicked because here we had placed, we had written button clicked. So once this is done, we'll press play and we'll go to the emulator. There we go, we press the button, and there we get the toast, button pressed. Okay, so now we're going to show what would happen if we made a long calculation. So here in button clicked, right before, we're going to just simulate a long calculation by using thread.sleep. This time is in milliseconds, so 5,000, that would be 5 seconds. And this might throw an exception, so we're going to surround it by, with a try-catch statement. So we're just going to send it to the emulator. OK, here the application launched. We press. And here, notice this button is not going back to its reset state. And the toast just appeared, and then the button redrew itself. So that's the problem. 
uh, if there had been different buttons and the user had tried to press them that he wouldn't be able to because the thread would be um, stuck here in the thread.sleep statement. So this is where this is why we need an async task. And how do we do one? It's pretty easy. You could do this in a different file because it's a new class we're going to write, but here I'm just going to make a nested class and we're going to do private my task. This could be any name you want, but the important thing is that it extends and offers async task. There we go. This receives three classes. And for now, we're just going to put void, void, and void, but I'll show you what that means a bit later on. And inside here, it's an error because we have to add some unimplemented methods. We'll just click here, and this won't. So the my task will execute whatever is in with no parameters for now. And I'll just show you what happens. So we press press play, select our emulator, and go to the emulator. Okay, so here we've passed this long calculation to the background. So we won't actually know when this finishes, but it will happen. And we're going to execute it by typing here new my task. We make a new Okay, here's the application and we're going to press and then I'll explain what happens. There. Okay. So what happened here? We pressed the button and as you see the button redrew itself and the toast appeared immediately. That shows that when we did the mytask.execute we passed immediately to the next line of code which showed the toast and the main thread continued responding to user actions. We could have pressed the button again if we wanted to. But this also executed and we didn't see it but it also executed but it did it in a secondary thread. That's the idea. So that's the main idea of an async task. You could just use it like that. But now we're going to start um, so that's the main idea of an async task. Uh, you could just leave it there and do whatever you want to do here but sometimes you're going to want to return some sort of information back to the main thread. Like for example if here we did downloaded a file we might want to pass the file to the main thread to show it to the user if it's an image for example. So in that case we're going to add another method here. So we'll type override, this is not necessary but recommended and we're going to type protected and void and here on up to here for now and in the next uh, in the next video so we're just gonna leave this video up to here but you method call to this async task so we continue with that see you next time